Okay, let's look at some basic anatomy of the external brain. So when we take this out, and you can imagine it just like this, the brain itself is actually divided into two hemispheres. Two hemispheres. And what happens is, if you remember, this structure, as I pull it out of the head here, right here, was called the fulx cerebri. Fulx cerebri. This is that tissue that comes down and kind of separates the two hemispheres of the brain. In fact, this right here, you can actually imagine coming down about this far into this hemisphere here, okay? So we have two hemispheres, not cut totally in half, but like I said, separated. And when we look at the brain, I think the easiest way to start is with uh, some external anatomy. So let's look at these one, one area at a time. So with regard to external anatomy, if we look at the lateral view here, we can divide this up into lobes. We have the frontal lobe here. We have the parietal lobe here. We have the occipital lobe here, anterior, posterior. Frontal, remember your frontal bone is right behind your forehead. Frontal bone, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, and then your occipital lobe, very similar to your skull anatomy. We also have here the temporal lobe. You'll remember the temporal bone on the side of the skull as well. And what separates these are structures called sulci or sulci. So this one right here is called the central sulcus. Central sulcus runs right down the middle here. And the central sulcus is what separates the frontal lobe, which goes all the way to here, central sulcus, from the parietal lobe. Parietal lobe goes back from here. If we look at the lateral sulcus, which runs right through here, the lateral sulcus is what separates the temporal lobe from the rest of the brain. The occipital lobe is separated by something called the parietal occipital sulcus. You cannot see it right here though. Quick hint, if you turn this model around, you'll see it right here. So this would be parietal lobe. Here's your parietal occipital sulcus. This would be occipital lobe. Again, if we go back to external anatomy here, we will also see the cerebellum. And then we start to see a little bit underneath here, part of the pons, and then the medulla oblongata. So this is external anatomy.